Hannah is a member of the band Shell, along with her three younger sisters, and has had music featured on NPR, Colorado Public Radio, ABC Family, and MTV. She recently launched her own podcast, Meant for Good, available where all great podcasts are found. This is a Know His Love story. I think there was a time, probably five or six years ago, when I started questioning God's love. Actually, I don't know if it was his love that I was questioning because I've been aware of him since I was a small child because I was raised in a Christian home. Um, But I did go through a season of, I think, questioning Christianity. And, um, you know, that's what I was raised in. And then some of my family members um, started living lifestyles that were contrary to what we had been raised with. And this really gave me a lot of questions. And I would hear some Christians say, oh, you're going to go to hell for living that way. And da, da, da. And I'd, I'd hear Christians condemn them. And I just observed the pain that they felt by that rejection, especially for things that they didn't feel like they could help in their lives. They didn't, you know, they they felt like the lifestyle they were living were who they truly were, um, uh, such a part of their identity. Um, and I just remember watching this and thinking, I, I love my family. I, I love them so much. I can't imagine um, a God who loves unconditionally wanting to send them to hell. I couldn't reconcile that in my community at the time. And so I couldn't shake God's love. I was so keenly aware of it. And I think part of that probably has to do with my dad. And uh, like, I've always known that my dad is there for me. Like I can call him anytime. He will literally show up guns blazing if he has to. He will show up for me. And I have that same feeling about about Father God. And I, uh, so yeah, that was just innately um, there. God's love, I've been aware of it, but I did come to a point where I was like, okay, I can't reconcile all of this. His love feels bigger than what I'm seeing in my community and in the church. And so I took a little break from Christianity during that time and kind of got more in the world. I was still aware of God's love, but I wasn't going to church. I decided not to read the Bible. And I started hanging out with um, atheists and agnostics. And um, that was actually one of the darkest times in my life because those folks, (laughs) I had never been around people who questioned my faith, really. Not anyone that I cared about who questioned my faith. And so during that time, having so many people coming at me at once and not having community, not having people encouraging my faith, um, it was a dark season where I finally had to come to God and and I wasn't sure who God was either. I just was aware of this love at this point. So I kind of said, God, he, she, it, whatever you are, if you're real, which I know you are, but I need you to reveal yourself on your terms, not what anyone else has told me about you. I want to peel off all the religious layers. I want to know who you are, who you say you are. And um, after that, literally the next day, even God began to just show up as love. And I felt like he really opened my eyes and he really revealed to me that he was the God of the universe and that he was the God of Abraham and that and Isaac and Jacob and, and uh, that he sent Jesus. And he, he really revealed to me that Christianity is meant to be the manifestation of that love. And that um, I had really been missing some things. Um, But he did, he did show me that he was love. And I, that has stuck with me ever since. I mean, it changed my life, just being willing to ask that question of him and ask him to reveal himself on his terms not on mine or anyone else's. So I have, I have a story. Um, I was in London when all of this was happening. I was kind of staying south of the city with a friend and I was on tour with my sisters. 
we all play in a band together and we were playing shows and doing radio interviews and just kind of in London, kind of hanging out and doing our thing. And I would hop on a bus every morning and, and meet them somewhere in the city. And the, these double decker buses, they were always so full that I would have to climb to the second story and go sit in the very back. Like it barely had room for me to get on there every morning. Um, yeah, this was the day after I prayed. I essentially said, God, I really need you to show up tomorrow because everyone's telling me you don't exist. They're saying, look at me, I'm doing fine without God. And um, even though they weren't living lives that I actually admired or was inspired by, I still was like, well, yeah, you're paying your bills, you're doing your thing, and you don't seem to have God in your life. So (laughs) after listening to that logic um, from a few too many people, I really was kind of questioning things. And so hence this prayer, God, I really need you to show up tomorrow. Go to sleep, forget I prayed it. And the next morning I get up, get on the bus. It's like a weekday, same time as usual. This bus should be packed and there's no one on it. So I'm walking along the first level of the bus. All of a sudden, I get to the middle of the bus and this woman stands up in the back of the bus and starts screaming. And I just froze. And part of me wanted to get off the bus and part of me wanted to go pray for her. And so I asked God what to do. I was like, Lord, do you want me to engage? Do you want me to go over there or do you want me to get off the bus? And um, I heard her shout Jesus's name three times. And I was like, well, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. So I went to the back of the bus and put my things down and um, I said, hey, do you want me to pray for you? And and she says, yes. And she's like shaking. She's like convulsing at this point. Um, And so she, the way the seats work at the back, back of the bus is you're sitting across from each other. So I sit down across from her and put my hands out and she grabs my wrist and she's like shaking she's shaking me at this point um and so I just prayed for her and I just asked God for peace I asked for protection I asked for provision I asked for everything that I could think of on her behalf that might be causing um this pain in her life or whatever whatever she was feeling at that moment and um as we prayed and the bus drove on she gradually calmed down until she was sitting there peacefully and then at some point we both knew it we got to her stop ended the prayer, stood up, and she looked at me and said, thank you. And then she got off the bus. And at this point, I was just in shock. I mean, I I love people, but it's rare for me to put myself out there like that. And it's becoming more of a thing. But especially during that time, I was particularly shy, and kind of afraid of people. Um, and so I just kind of, wow did that really just happen? And I looked around the bus again, no one's on it. And I'm just standing there like, did the bus driver see any of this? Um, And so he got me to my stop and then I got off and my sisters were there waiting for me and I got to tell them all about it. And everyone was really excited. And the thing that just hit me in that moment was that, um, you know, God's peace is something so supernatural. And when he shows up in a situation like that, like, I don't feel like that was me going there and um, doing that. I felt like it was the Holy Spirit pushing me to go. And it was something in my spirit that recognized the opportunity and acted on it. And I feel like that's what I see when um, when God shows up in a situation. He heals things. He reconciles things. He brings peace. He works them out in a way that doesn't make sense to my mind but then he does it. And I just kind of watch him in awe. I I see the result of him. Um, I see the evidence of his presence and I just experience it with awe. And so that was what happened in that moment. And I realized, yeah, he's the one that does this. He's the one that fixes things. And I want to be on his team. (laughs) I think that's something that I'm still unpacking. Um, there, I know that he's my provider. I, f- I feel like God is constantly trying to reveal all the ways that he wants to love me and care for me. And there have been um, maybe areas in my life where I didn't, where I didn't think of this was a father's role or where I didn't see it demonstrated quite that way. 
And I feel like God is always showing me that he's even better than anything I've experienced here. He's even better than any relationship I've had here. And he's constantly showing me, hey, I'm trying to do this for you. And you keep trying to have another person do this for you. And it's not going to be as good as what I have for you. And so um, I'm always thankful when I realize that. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get that from this person. And um, it's always such a sweet um like when he when he confronts me with something, it's never punishment. And I think on earth we experience that as punishment a lot with our with our parents. It can play out that way, even with friends or coworkers. Sometimes we can be punished instead of corrected. And God has really shown me that there's so much grace involved in his correction and that he does it out of love from a place of like sometimes it's really this simple hey, I know what you need and I've got it for you. So if you just come to me, I'll give it to you. And sometimes that's how the correction is. It's not like you're terrible, you did blah, blah, blah. It's like, I understand why you went there for that. I understand why you're looking there, but that's not where you get it. You get it from me. So just just repent, literally just turn to me and get it over here. Um, And I feel like lately he's been telling me that I'm his princess. It's kind of like that story of the little princess, um, which I grew up watching a movie um, called The Little Princess. I know it's a book. I haven't read the book yet, but I feel like he's been um, inviting me to think of him in that way, that he, to to receive his affection towards me in that way, that he's looking at me as his little princess in the um you know, sometimes it feels silly to say it out loud, but he's been kind of showing me that like, hey, I love you even more than what you've experienced from your earthly father. And um, just like opening up my mind to to receive him in that way. Um, and I guess the thing I keep getting from him is that there's more and there always will be. There will always be more there. Um and so anyway, that's kind of <laughs> a longer version of what I'm thinking, but um, I'm still processing what it means. But if I could sum it all up, he, I think he has more love in store for each one of us than anything that we've received or experienced. And it will never run out. There will always be more. And that makes it an adventure and a mystery. I feel like there are two ways in particular um, that God reveals his love in my life. And the first one, um, often happens through community and it's through what I would call a word of knowledge or a word of encouragement from a friend or sometimes even a stranger. Um, I've had people that don't know me come up to me and give me a full on prophecy (laughs) about, um, about what God has in store for me. And I've had moments where I needed that so much. I needed just some encouragement and a vision beyond what I was seeing with my natural eyes. And um, I've had moments where people gave me a prophetic word or a word of knowledge that was so spot on. It was exactly what I needed to hold on to in that moment. And it's essentially a revelation of, um, you know, God told us to be fruitful and multiply. Sometimes we don't know what that looks like. And then someone else, <laughs> God gives them a little download of it, or he gives them just a little a little piece that's kind of like a tool for us in that moment. And then they impart that. It's like, yeah, here's the hammer you need to build the thing. <laughs> and um, whenever that happens, and it happens fairly often, especially in a community of people who know the Holy Spirit, um, the spirit puts these things on our hearts and prompts us to encourage each other and really for the edification of the body. Um, so whenever that happens, I feel seen. I feel so seen. I feel so loved. And um, it just shows me like God cares about what's going on in my life. He He cares about the dreams and the desires of my heart. And the closer I get to him, I think the more those dreams and desires like his dreams and desires for my life and so um he wants those things to happen even more than i do you know he wants to prosper us he 
he said he has plans to prosper us, not to harm us. He wants to give us hope for the future and a long life. And so he wants us to live and thrive even more than we do. So um, when I get a, a word of encouragement or a word of knowledge that's pointing me in the direction of the wonderful plans that he has for my life, that I that is just like, oh, that makes my whole year. Um, and the second thing, um, yeah, I wasn't raised with an awareness of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I had a moment about five years ago, right around the time that I was questioning everything. Sometime within that time period, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Um, and it was basically, <laughs> I felt like I had been living life in grayscale before. And then all of a sudden, life was in color. Um, it was literally a before and after experience. It was a game changing moment where, wow, I was trying to do all of this out of my strength before, and now it's the Holy Spirit doing this through me. And I'm literally just a conduit. So um, I remember calling my dad after that moment and being like, Dad, did you know about the Holy Spirit? How come no one told me? <laughs> just seemed like so excited to to have access to, to God um, in that way, in such a tangible, experiential way. Holy Spirit um, has come and uh, just wrecked me. There have been times where I've been sobbing, just experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit or laughing, um, literally giggling because of Holy Spirit just being in the room. Um, and I, you know, now that I know we have access to the Holy Spirit daily, minute by minute, moment by moment, um, that we can actually live in that relationship and in that communion with God in that way. Um, Every time I feel that, uh, every time Holy Spirit shows up, which is daily, um, I feel so loved. And it's like, ha it's literally like having a friend in the room with me, like having a best friend. And he is our wonderful counselor. And uh, yeah, so every time I experience the Holy Spirit's presence, I feel loved because, well, he is love. <laughs> we are made to know God and that he has so many promises that are like laws in the world kind of like the law of gravity um and because god doesn't say anything and then have it not happen um he's so consistent and reliable in that way i would say there's a whole purpose for life that is so um it's so fulfilling um, just knowing him because we're designed for it and I think it's worth it's really worth exploring it's it's worth asking him who are you how do you feel about me and it's it's worth it's worth the response I would say it's it's more than worth it and it's it's not a whole lot to risk it if you if you think about it, because we're told things on a daily basis, whether it's by the news or by a doctor, that we just come into agreement with that we're used to just believing because it's kind of how the world works and it's what everybody does. Um, but we find ourselves daily agreeing with things that are beyond us. And a lot of those things aren't actually good things. Like you could get a report from a doctor and agree for a disease to manifest in your body and take your life. And here we have the author of everything good and beautiful true and, and true saying, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. What do you have to risk? <laughs> what do you have to lose by opening up a relationship with a good and loving God? who wants you to live and not die, who wants you to to be healed and to live life to the fullness, to the fullest. Um, I think his love is something that will always be there. There will always be more of it. And the more that we know him, the more we experience his love and um, it, yeah, if you haven't experienced it yet, it's it's waiting for you. It never runs out. It never expires. It's not going away. Like it's he's literally 
waiting there, the author of everything beautiful and good and true, the one who made puppies and ducklings and babies and like everything cute that we just like love and get so excited about. Um, you know, he's the one that made all of that and he's looking at each one of us like we're the cutest, sweetest, most precious little thing and that's how he feels about us and why not be adored by the one who literally designed every cell in our bodies and every hair on our head with love and intention, fearfully and wonderfully knowing that we are designed to do good things. And I think about his promise to Abraham too, that that through his descendants, um, God would bless all the nations and that they would outnumber the stars. So basically, God talking about us, we're gonna we're meant to outnumber the stars. There could be a lot of us, and we're meant to bless the nations. We're meant to bless each other, and that, that promise is like a law. That's what we're designed for. We're meant for good on the earth and in each other's lives. And if we really want to live in fullness of that promise and see it come to pass and manifest in every area of our lives, I think it's part of us being fruitful and multiplying. Um, we have to know him and we have to get strategy from him. That's part of that relationship. And I just think there's so much purpose involved in all of that. And if we were really tapped into that purpose, into the goodness of what he actually has planned for our lives, we wouldn't be turning to things like drugs and alcohol and, um, you know, that rock star lifestyle and all that I think we would be, we would really be set on loving each other and living out God's promises and we would have purpose and uh, we'd be healing the world. So I think it's definitely worth, uh, worth a conversation with a loving God. Thank you.